Thanks for posting a question on my scale about page. I'm uh, I'm truly honored that you would ask uh, this kind of question to me. Or I mean, I'm truly honored that you would uh, value the response I, or, or the feedback I could give in this particular topic. So, and I mean, before I go any further, let me just say that clearly. I mean, I, my opinion. Of course, you already know this, but just I mean, to to, to make it more obvious, uh, my opinion is just one opinion amongst many others. And I think when it comes to these sort of big. Uh, life decisions as to what to study or like what what uh, domain of work to get go into Clearly source m more opinions from from more people like friends and family, right? But uh, but yeah, I mean, like The probably you or of course you already know this, but I mean just just so that it's sad, right? Um, so, so it's very interesting. I mean the last question I answered on scale was actually a question Which was pretty similar to, to the one that you're asking now and I think let me let me draw kind of on that because I think one of the things that I found interesting that came out of my response to, to that person's question was that here, here's the way I'm thinking about university and kind of personal responsibility in terms of uh, your role in the world as a, as a human being, right? I'm thinking of it as that if you want to contribute to the world, you should find something which is just at the brink of the... Uh, the hmm, sorry, I'm struggling with English here, but, but like... Uh, hmm, is just just difficult enough no 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 sorry the other way around it's it's as difficult as you can manage right without being overwhelmed right do the thing that's the most difficult thing that you can do right and that's how you'll bring massive value to the world and and in my mind right this is the way i think about it uh that's when you feel the most uh useful and happy right it's like this uh what's that saying like the competence confidence uh, sort of correspondence or, or correlation, right? Like, the more competent you become in something, the more confident you become as a person, right? And, and I would argue, as you become more confident, you kind of become more happy, right? Like, like you, you feel useful as a human being, right? Like, if we think of this, like, the Maslow's hierarchy of needs, for example, where it's like, uh, well, you need uh, shelter and uh, you, you need to feel physically safe and you need to be like fed, fed like you need to be able to eat, you need to be able to drink water, etc. Et and the, cli the higher we climb up that hierarchy, eventually we get to things such as like um, personal development and, and fulfillment. And, and that's, in my mind, that, that feels like that's, that surrounds uh, confidence or essentially competence, right? Like as you build competence, you're, you're able to bring new value, bring new things into the world. And as you do that, you'll feel fulfilled. Okay, but maybe this is a tangent. Let, let, me, let me actually uh, narrow down on your actual question, right? So, so you were asking, uh, you're, you're considering studying uh, computer science but you're a bit worried about a few a few points, right? Which are completely valid points. And by the way, I, I completely relate to a few of these points, right? So you're saying maybe it's uh, too much work. Uh, maybe you'll spend all day uh, sitting at the screen, not talking to people. And you want to be able to have personal relationships. You want to be able to uh, engage in debate and conversation and maybe talk to professors and all that stuff, right? So, I mean, if we just go on the last point, like being able to talk to professors and, and actually having good teachers, right, or good staff, that's super difficult, man, like, I don't know, like, yeah, I mean, if you want to make a smart decision uh, in, in terms of going somewhere where that's more prevalent or usual uh, or common, I guess is the word I'm looking for, um, I'm probably the wrong person to ask, right, I, I don't know, like, I would assume that uh, I mean, these are people, these are characteristics of people, right? And like, it probably depends massively depending on where you go. So, so like, if you go one place studying, one studying, say, computer science, it might be fantastic. And if you, and then you go to another place and you study computer science, it might be catastrophic from that perspective, right? Because in the end, it comes down to people and then it depends on who, uh, who's actually hired uh, to do, to fulfill those positions at that particular university. So, yeah. Sorry. Um, sorry, I have water in my ear. I'm going crazy. <laughs> Apologies. Um, so, so, yeah, I mean, I would assume that's kind of a uh, a shot in the dark, right? Like, like maybe you get lucky, maybe you don't, right? But, uh, but yeah, again, like, if you want to make a... a, a 
a strategic decision there. I, I would I would ask somebody who's more senior than uh, than me, right? But regarding the other points, I mean, I kind of think of this as that much of this is within your own power, right? Or like you have the power to control a lot of these things. Let me let me give you a concrete example. Let's think about this uh, engaging in personal relationships or like they're being able to engage in debate with other people and not being like like let's let's think of it as socialized right like having a social dimension and not just being completely closed in so so here's the thing before i went to university i went to i'm not sure how that translates into english so i won't use any terms but like the the the, the school thing that was before university um which is called uh gymnasium in, in swedish or in sweden but i know that's not the word in english but just for reference right I went to an IT-oriented thing, gymnasium, before I went to university, right? And after that, after having finished that, I spent two years, like, mucking about and trying to do, like, indie game development, like, working with Flash, or, like, programming for fun. Uh, but, but I was sort of convinced, I was convinced that I don't want to go back into IT because I felt isolated, right? Kind of like what you're saying now. I felt like, okay... Well, life has got to be about more than about computers, right? And it just seems like I'm spending a lot of time indoors with people who want to spend a lot of time indoors, right? And, and I'm not actually getting out into the world and, and I'm not actually engaging with people. But the way I look at this in retrospect now, like it feels like instead of... Let me put it this way. The reason I didn't do anything majorly useful for those two years was because I didn't accept the fact that what, what seems to be the thing that I'm fairly uh, naturally uh, susceptible to learning is in the domain of computers. Right? I, wasn't, I wasn't accepting that it seems like that's something that I'm fairly good at doing. And, and like, let's not talk about nature-nurture. Right? Let's not talk about what was suitable for me like biologically or like like given the genetic hand that i was dealt uh you could also take another view which was that well when i was a kid i used to do a lot of uh computer stuff like i don't know play computer games or like muck around with video games so so i was i've i've spent quite a lot of time in my life with computers meaning that it makes sense for me as an individual to, to, to make something computer related my profession because I've spent so much time in it that, that clearly there's, there's sort of, there's a, a certain level of maturity, right? And it takes a lot of time to replace that maturity. So, so like, if you're thinking about doing computer science, I assume you have some basic level of, of computing skills, right? And, and, and like, Really, I do count playing video games like that's definitely a, a computing skill like If you've been playing video games, you've spent time with computers, right? And that gives you proficiency in my mind, right? It's like, well, okay, it's not like well It's difficult to find a job with that as as the only background surely But you have you, you've you've spent time in the vicinity of computers giving you some proficiency that other people don't have Right? And that's the key point, right? Like you all already have an edge. And I think it makes sense then to make use of that edge when you go into your career. Okay, but now I'm, I'm drifting off topic. What I was trying to say is that I was concerned that I would be completely isolated socially. Now, that's not necessarily the case, right? Like, like university, uh, regardless of, of what degree you choose to, to, to get into, or what subject you, you choose to get into, uh, university is usually filled with people who are actually there to, to learn something, right? So as opposed to schooling before university, like before university, there's a lot of people who are there just like because they have to. And yes, there are f few people in, in university that are there because they quotation marks have to, right? Like ps pressure for parents and pressure from society and all that stuff. But, but most people in university realize that they're there for the sake, for their own sake, right? Like they're there to learn something and, and to grow good in, or to, to gain skills, right? That, that makes them uh, 
productive and useful citizens, right? Uh, to gain competence. And, and I think that makes a huge difference, right? Because, because suddenly then you're in a situation where it's no longer this sort of playground feeling where there's the cool kids and the non-cool kids. Of course, like, that just continues throughout life. Of course, life is like that, right? Like, there are all, always these social hierarchies where, where people group up in different groups. But it's less of that in university because people are slowly growing up. And, okay, what I'm trying to say in a very strange way is that you can, of course, have a social life regardless of, of where you, uh, where you, or what you study, right? Even if every single person in the, in, in the, in the, uh, do you call them programs? I assume you call them programs, like within the uh, subject that you choose to study, even if every single person in your class, you feel as a complete douchebag that you never want to hang out with, right? Like, like maybe they're, like you feel like you want to engage in debate, but they're just super nerdy and don't don't want to talk to anyone, right? Like even if that's the case, there are tons of people in the world and, and all you have to do is just find a hobby and engage with other people, right? So, so like, let me give you an example. Currently, I'm doing a lot of rock climbing, right? So... I'm hanging out with people who are uh, close to me geographically, but very, very far from me academically, right? I mean, I I'm doing a PhD, so I'm, I'm still in university, right? Or in some sense, I'm back to university. Um, but I'm not hanging out with people who are academically, subjectally, <laughs> from a subject sense, similar to me, right? I'm hanging out with people who have the same interest as me, right? But are doing something completely different that I would never do, right? Like, like academically, because we find common ground in the thing that we want to do, right? And if I could redo my my bachelor's years, right? Sorry, my cat is mucking about. I have to I have to stop this. <laughs> Sorry about that, man. Um, so if I could redo my bachelor years, uh, I would, uh, I would do more things that were activities outside of the curriculum, right? Like like I, I would I, I would spend more time uh, doing completely different things, um, where I would meet people that are outside of of. Uh, of the subject that I'm studying, right? I would find common ground with people who like the same things as I do outside of the program, outside of, of my particular class, right? Because you can think about it this way, like so, uh, social, let's actually, let's think about it this way, right? Your social circle is easier to build than three years bachelor's than a three years bachelor's education, right? Or, I mean, computer science for you is, is I'm not sure, maybe it's five years for you. Um, so we have this degree called civil engineering, and if you do computer science in, in Sweden, that's five years, right? So that's a long time, long time, right? So, so the way I look at it is like, which thing is cheaper? Which thing is easier to replace, right? And I'm, I know this sounds like, this makes me sound completely harsh and evil, but like friends are, are not true, true friends. Of course, I mean, true friends are like invaluable and super difficult to, to, to replace. Uh, I understand that for sure, for sure. I'm, I'm not an idiot like that. But what I'm saying is that the creation of, of friends, the, the, the creation of a, let's say, surface level friendship, like, like casual, casual, casually hanging out with people, that thing is much more controllable then uh, not more controllable less that that thing is much less expensive than an education like an education is super duper expensive so so it's really important in my mind that you get the education part right right like like it doesn't make any sense to say okay i think it would f from the perspective of my skills and from the perspective of what kind of career i want to have it would make sense to do this thing but i'm not going to do that thing because I want to have a social life, so I'm going to do this thing, this other thing, where it seems like 
there are uh, th th where it seems like they have a nicer social life and they have more fun activities that they engage in, right? That doesn't make any sense. I, I, I would say, from my perspective, right? I would say, do the thing that you feel like this is probably the thing that I'm partly somewhat kind of destined to do, right? It sounds kind of painful to do it, but let me just try to do it because it, it's difficult. And if I could manage to do it, I would be, I would be super employable, right? And, and I, would, I would be, uh, I would grow extremely competent and I would be capable of contributing massively to society, right? I think that's, that's, that's the thing that we can, that, that's the things that we do that, that sort of <clears throat> make us, <clears throat> sorry, that, that make us grow as human beings, right? And, and, and that makes us feel like massive, right? It's like, because we grow super competent. So I would do, I would choose that and then think, okay, but I'm also a very, very social person, right? So then I would actively try to find social circles, right? I mean, if you, if you uh, appreciate debates, right? Awesome, right? I, I, I hear you, right? Like that makes a ton of sense. Maybe you could even join one of these. I can't remember what these are called. What are they called? Um, it'll come to me. Maybe there's the thing. There's this thing, right, where it's like people have people meet up to debate different topics, like debating societies. They're they're called something, 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 right? Yeah, I can't remember what these are called. But there there are tons of different groups that you can join in in. Uh, in university, and actually, I mean, if you think about it that way, university is filled with like super extroverted people. Probably they are they they uh, bundle up in, in some of uh, in some subjects rather than others. And I would assume, I mean, I, I don't have the stats on this, but I would assume like informally that probably computer science have more introverts than extroverts. But there are tons of extroverts in university, so so you could just uh, so what I'm saying is that. There are tons of uh, organized social groups, whether you're into like, I don't know, movies or like acting or like you know, circus stuff or beer drinking or like, uh, yeah, debating, you know, like politics. There are tons and tons of different groups and, and like university is a super fun time. And, and one way of, of finding a, a place to uh, engage with other people socially in a semi-structured manner is to join one of these groups, right? Whether it's like university re related or non-university related. Right? I'm, I'm just saying like university has tons of those because, because university have, have, university is filled with lots of energetic young people. But, but, right? My key point would be choose the thing for an education, from an education perspective, right? Uh, like, uh, like in regards to what, um, what subject you should choose. Choose the subject where you think that you, let's think about it as flow, right? So flow is like when something is um, difficult enough for you to stay motivated, right? For you to stay challenged but easy enough so that you won't feel completely bogged down, right? Completely like you won't get sort of struck by the feeling of like, oh my God, there is simply no possible way that I'll make this. And of course, I mean, we have to cut some slack here because university is kind of filled with that feeling of like, oh my God, there is no way I'm going to make this. But you will, right? You will. You're just underestimating the capacity that you have, the innate capacity that you have to work really hard figure things out and then sort of come out strong on the other side when you're like, well, this is actually pretty easy. How come I didn't understand this from the beginning? Like, don't under underestimate your capacity to, to, to fight through difficult problems. But anyways, um, if you think about flow, right? I think you should, you should err on the difficult side. You should, uh, when in doubt, right? Take something which is a little bit, that, that maybe seems a little bit too difficult, right? Because we tend to be a little bit lazy, right? We tend to be a little bit, let's say, uh, let's say difficulty averse or something like that, like, like kind of wanting to avoid things that are super or seem super, super difficult. Um, because I think, think, right? I think you'll thank yourself in the end, right? Like much, much like I do now, right? Like 
I thank myself that I did go into university, right? And that I did pick something which was computer related, right? Because probably what would have happened otherwise is that because I have this interest in computers, if I did something completely different, right? Like let's say I did biology, right? Which would, by the way, I mean, be super interesting. But maybe I would then, I would probably uh, end up doing something computer related within biology. Right? Like, like I would probably feel kind of malplaced because I should have done something computer related. But you know, I mean, that's not the end of the world either, right? Like you, you could also say that that would be great because then you would have a very solid skill like biology and then you could just see computers as a tool and learn computers on your sort of free time and then uh, maybe get into uh, like simulations right like like simulations of biological phenomena and then you'd, you'd be a great researcher for example <laughs> but um or you could start a biotech company i don't know anyways um doesn't that doesn't actually doesn't really matter well the, so let me put it this way what i've said before for example is that i did information systems which is in the social science uh, which is in the social sciences rather than the sciences. And I think, in retrospect, that the better move for me would have been if I would have mustered up the strength to uh, sort of do summer school and read up my math so that I would be eligible for computer science and then do computer science, okay? Because I could have managed it, right? But instead of erring on the difficult side, I erred on the easy side, right? And I went for the lower hanging fruits. I went for the simpler stuff because I just figured, ah, it's gonna, I mean, it's, it's better than nothing and I'm interested in computers, so let's do this thing, right? But you are very, very capable as a human being, right? We are underestimating our capacity to struggle, to get through some really difficult things, learn some really cool things, right? And become very... Uh, competent. So anyways, I mean, let me, let me try to wrap this up. In some sense, I think it doesn't really matter whether you do computer science or whether you do like, I mean, medicine or biology or physics or whatever it is else that you're thinking of. As long as you feel that you have some interest in it, right? And you feel that you're not cutting yourself short. Like that's a really important one super important one okay and don't kid yourself right because life is full of these situations where we where we rationalize right like like where we tell ourselves oh no 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 but i'm not actually doing this just because it's easy i'm doing it because i actually want to but somewhere deep down right like you actually know that you're doing it because it's easier right or let's say you're doing it because you think the people in that subject will be cooler than the people who would be in the subject that you would otherwise study like I would say that's, that's, that's a very, very dangerous reason, okay? The social stuff you can figure out. You can figure out in a different way. But, but, but figuring out difficult subjects, right? Such as computer science, biology, physics, all of these different topics, that's much more difficult, right? So don't take something just because you think the people there will be more interesting, right? Pick something where you feel like, okay, this is pretty difficult, but if I could do it, I would come out a cool, like I would come out a very very comp. Sorry, part two of this video. I was, I was accidentally make these videos too long. Sorry about that. Let me try to wrap this up. So, so part two. Okay, um, where was I? I? I was saying, try to do something which is which is. Div ah, I, I was saying like we were postulating. If you can do something which is, which is difficult, but, but you can, you can, it's possible for you to envision how you could come out the other side. And if you could come out the other side, uh, knowing the things that are in that, that subject, like if, if you can, um, if that looks, hmm, if you envisage yourself coming out of the other side, does that look like a person who's very competent, right? Like th does the things that that person would be capable of doing in society, look interesting right like if you do computer science for example right and you be you come out a great programmer in, in the other end right or a great theoretician or something like this right but let's say let's say a great programmer for the sake of the argument right what could you do with that 
Like there are tons of different things that you could do with that, right? Like you could, you could build your own startup if that's your thing, right? You could go work at like a major IT company, right? Build some really cool products that they are working on, right? Be part of like really, really big companies. You, you could just like, I, I don't know what floats your boat, right? Like, but, but, but IT is a good place, right? And it looks like it's going to be a good place for at least a few, few more years. So, so you could you could go on a hunt for the cash, right? Like, I know, I mean, many of my friends have spent years working for companies that don't they, that they don't necessarily feel like they have any emotional connection to, but they're making outrageous amounts of money doing that, right? And I mean, that shouldn't be underestimated. If that's your thing, like, if you feel like that's something that would that would uh, motivate you, then I mean, that's a great proposition. Right? And and again, none of these things, none of none of these different paths, right? Like whether you want to go for something that is like feels like it's truly great for the world or whether you want to go for something that's um that, that brings you tons of cash or like you want to uh create something from scratch, like build your own product and bring that into the world, like any of these things, regardless of which of these you choose, you can always have a great social life always right like that's completely on you like uh, or i mean let me as a disclaimer of course like we have to understand the 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 of course there's a cost there, there's a cost benefit analysis here of course right like if you want to become if you want to run a startup and you want to make this startup like the the biggest product in the world of course you're going to have to pay for that by giving up other things in life such as probably uh, your social life, right? But you don't have to aim for the biggest, baddest startup that will blow the world into pieces, right? I mean, good pieces, I, I, I hope. But um, and 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 if you want to work in a in a huge company, you don't have to aim for the top of the company. Like it doesn't matter what you do in in what what area, right? Like if you aim for the top of the pyramid, you're going to have to sacrifice tons of different things, such as friends and family, right? Because that's what people do to climb the hierarchy to get up into the top, right? But that doesn't have so much to do with the actual subject as it has to as as it has to do with who you are as a person and and how far you want to climb the pyramid right like let's let's say the further you climb the more you have to sacrifice but uh if you're if you're content with not going all the way to the top which i'm sort of suggesting is a good thing right because like who wants to give up everything right i surely don't right like I mentioned rock climbing, right? Like I want to do rock climbing because life is super short and I'd rather do that before I die, right? Than spend all my time climbing this stupid pyramid. So so it's a balance, right? But but again, I would say this has less to do with uh, the the thing or the the subject that you get into and more about uh, to do with how much you're willing to sacrifice in order to climb to the top how far you want to climb uh, up the pyramid okay let me let me let me just read your question to see if i'm i'm missing something um ah sorry you did actually say 4 years here sorry sorry so so, so i mean 4 years is still a very long time right but but yeah without engaging i mean also okay last point then i'll be quiet okay you're saying um Again, that you want to engage in debate and conversation. Don't underestimate the depth, the theoretical depth that exists in some of these different topics, right? So computer science, for example, has tons of theoretical depth. So if you have, if you're lucky to have a few teachers or, or classmates that are th sort of theoretically aligned and, and are willing to have some discussions there, you can very quickly go borderline philosophy very quickly right so i mean uh, yeah i mean <laughs> i'm hesitating to go there but like compilers and category theory for example are two things that that i find borderline philosophical right like who is that like noam chomsky right noam chomsky the guy who invented oh what's that called so it's I've been having too much vacation, I guess. Um, 
uh, this hierarchy of different languages. Chomsky's hierarchy, sorry, it's called Chomsky, Chomsky, Chomsky's hierarchy, right? He's actually a, a linguist, I guess is the term, like, like, like he's from linguistics. So that just blew my mind when I learned that, right? Like, this dude from linguistics is contributing to computer science, and not like in a small way, like in a major, major way, theoretically. So that sort of goes to show that these things, they're very... Sorry, I'm holding my camera in one hand, so I can't draw this, but I'm trying to draw like a Venn diagram with overlapping circles, right? Like, there's a lot of overlap between different disciplines, and there's a lot of interesting theoretical things within these disciplines. And, and of course, I mean, category theory, that's, that's a whole discussion in and of itself, but, but that, like... That's filled with philosophical, or let's say philosophically provoking questions, right? Um, I mean, I, I'm by no means claiming that I know hardly anything about, about uh, category theory, but, but for us laymen, it's, it's interesting to, to sort of dive into that. Anyways, okay. Um, and of course, there's always YouTube. I mean, if we think about it that way, right? Once you get uh, proficient enough, competent enough, so that you can understand some of the basic terms within the discipline, like if you start to study computer science, even if it happens that all of your, let's say, um, professors and everyone, <laughs> all of your sort of classmates, turn out to be really boring and don't, don't actually a ask any of what you find to be the very important questions, any, any of the, the really important questions, you could always go online, right? And, and surely, surely there are people who are discussing those questions because if they strike you, right, the probability that that question hasn't s struck anyone else, it's like next to none, right? Like, if it's a difficult question, people have been thinking about it, right? For sure. And that's, that's really interesting. Like, okay, okay, sorry, this is the, the last thing I'm going to say and then, and then I'm going to give it up. This actually puts me back into a, to, to a memory where, where, like, I was sitting in class uh, and there's, there's this, this lecturer, and I, I think we're talking about algorithms, right? And, and somehow, for some, ah, we're talking about algorithms, we're talking about recursion, and then we get into fractals, right? And, like, I'm just sitting there and it's like my mind is bl being blown, right? And I'm sort of realizing that the, the person is not actually talking about programming, the person is actually talking about life, right? I understand this makes me sound stupid, maybe, and, and I would assume that that's a subjective interpretation that depends on how, let's say, philosophically or borderline... metaphysically, I guess, uh, inclined you are to, to think, right? Like, like, if you like to think in terms of metaphors. But anyway, since I mean, I, I'm not claiming that this is what is, I'm just claiming that it's, it's a way of interpreting, right? So it's so like, I felt like, my goodness, like what we're talking about now isn't actually programming. What we're talking about now isn't actually computers. It's a way of understanding how pieces in the world are compartmentalized, like ontology, like we're talking about what is, right? Like, like what are different things? Like we're talking about the processes that explain life and how how life evolves from uh from one state into the next state right as as a, as, a, as an outcome of the previous state and thoughts similar to this right and i'm like like my mind is totally blown and and then i thought about that afterwards and then i thought okay but maybe this has less to do with the fact that that we were talking about algorithms and more about, and it has more to do with the fact that we're talking about a particular thing, and the person who is talking about that particular thing has spent a lot, like an insane amount of time thinking about that thing, so that we've probed down to like the crazy details of that particular thing. And probably it wouldn't matter if we talked about algorithms, or whether we talked about, let's say, math, right? Or whether we talked about biology, or, or laws in physics, right? Like, a number of these different things that would feel, that I assume would feel equally mind-blowing and, and sort of, they, they, it would feel like they 
explain like a whole host of phenomena where you would go like ka-chum, where you would just like, go like aha, oh. right? And it's like that explains so much and it's like you get words for something that you've been feeling for a long time but you've lacked the capacity to explain. Sorry now. <laughs> okay. <coughs> Way off topic. What I'm trying to say is <clears throat> If you get into something that's sufficiently difficult uh, and you're and you're borderline philosophically inclined, which it sounds kind of like you are you are because you want to engage in in debate and conversation so, so it sounds like you're thinking things through really thoroughly, then I think being philosophically challenged or challenged to the point where you really have to think right in order to sort of sort of sort your mind out right. I think it's an inevitable outcome, regardless of, of what you study, right? It's, it's more, it has more to do with the way you are approaching things than the, the thing that you're studying. But don't choose something that is insufficiently difficult, right? In, in relation to your capacity, right? Choose something that really challenges you. And that's, y'all, <laughs> that's, that's the way I would think about it, for sure. And don't beat yourself up. I mean, it's like, you'll make it. No worries, man. Okay, sorry, I hope that was useful. Maybe that was <laughs> uh, on a complete tangent, but, but hope, hopefully those are some useful thoughts. And again, do source the opinion of others. All right, super good. Thanks a bunch uh, for the question. And uh, yeah, I, I uh, hope to see you again on the YouTube channel. Thanks, and I'll see you around. And best of luck, man.